Hey guys, I thought I'd pop on with the uh, latest Manalawa Solar Observatory K-Core Coronagraph uh, shot around 72 frames starts around uh, 1740 UTC so that's about 240 today Eastern Standard Time and it runs up for about three hours looks like uh, two and a half maybe but anyway you see all the stuff flying around this is crazy man I saw the same thing yesterday but I didn't bother making a movie and then this morning when I ba went back in and looked and they somehow had sanitized yesterday's run it's still up but all this stuff you see flying around they managed to take it out and still had these objects down here which you could still faintly see with all the clutter so I mean you know what the heck is it these are the minutes flying by I think I can slow it down let's see that's as slow as I can get it you can still see uh, the minutes are flying by still quicker than a second. Okay, it's going slower. How slow will it go? Ah, <laughs> we got it pretty slow. <laughs> so it's running, it's still a little bit more than a minute a second, looks like. And there's 72 frames. Then it loops back, starts at zero. So I got it down to maybe almost a minute a second. Still perhaps a little bit faster. But it gives us a better uh, look at what's flying around here. I mean, <clears throat> to me, I don't know what else it could be, but other than a debris field. Somehow they're catching a debris field flying around. <clears throat> Excuse me. Between the top of this mountain in Hawaii and the solar observatory. They're shooting a telescope shot right at the sun. This is the occlusion disk. And So the time would be earlier in Hawaii, not that that would make a big difference, but I think it might be about six hours earlier than here, so that would put it about, what, 8 a.m. or something to start, somewhere around there, but it's definitely the lights, the sun's up, I mean, look at all this stuff, this is craziness. And you watch tomorrow. I'll leave the link. Go in and look, and you if I don't make a video on it, you'll see that they got this all scrubbed out, sanitized it out. So we, like I said, we still got the still a couple main objects here and here. Looks like from some of my earlier vids. And it's hard to see any other real big ones that are what we have seen in the past. So as far as I know, this is the white light shot. And it's an infrared with a gamma filter. 
I have no expertise whatsoever in photography, but I do know the gamma brings out some extra stuff you wouldn't normally see with the naked eye, as does infrared. So there you have that. Um, here's the A slash 24 hours. We're going to focus on the solar wind speed. Well, you can see it's a little bit jiggity here all the way through. But it never gets above 500. <clears throat> but if you look at the integrated space weather, ISWA, here's the uh, latest run back 300 frames. And uh, you could see that it's all over the board it's up and down and it's over 500 quite a bit even over six seven hundred i was watching it i don't think it quite went over 800 but nonetheless that means there's got to be there i think there was one over 800 there we just saw it'd be best to click full screen on this if you want to really see these little numbers flying around and like I tried to point out on other videos this is a uh, from solar ham space weather tutorial this is the L1 Lagrange point that's where the ACE satellite resides which is 930,000 miles or 1.5 million kilometers in front of the earth between the earth and sun and it always stays in this fixed position it's because that's uh, what happens when they put it in that spot. That's why they call it a Lagrange point. And that's L4, Lagrange point 4, L5. That's where the stereo heads. Satellite, you get all those shots of the sun, the A1A, SOHO, SDO, I believe. Stereo behind is over here. Uh, supposedly that one's been down for a couple of years. You don't see it. But anyway, point being looking at solar wind we should only be detecting on this ace solar wind satellite space weather satellite stuff that's coming from the sun up into this point where the ace satellite resides and as i showed you the solar wind speed's been pretty constant 450 except you get all these little blips here and there but it never got above 450 really at any point and then it started dropping down to 400 showed you here solar wind speed and this is being measured by these GOES satellites and this 22,000 236 mile fixed orbit position geo, a geosynchronous orbit around the earth this is what all this measurement comes from so clearly there's something that has to be in between the A satellite and Earth, somewhere something behind that's behind the A satellite that's throwing solar wind pressure our way. Now, whether it's a, another solar body or yeah, I, I, I'm hesitant. I don't think it could be one of the planets' magnetospheres throwing that kind of pressure but if it was close maybe I don't know because clearly we got a bunch of backside pressure coming from uh, what I would have to determine would be nemesis a binary twin sun um, and you're seeing the backside pressure here along with all these blue interplanetary magnetic field lines should only be about nine because we have nine planets in one sun normally but now that there's a second sun in the neighborhood with seven planets of its own it's very likely that that would account for all these extra interplanetary magnetic field lines and you get especially a bunch of ones creeping out in front of us so whether this uh, nemesis is somewhere off to the side and it's still shooting solar wind this way and it's still wrapping around and making a uh, electromagnetic connection with the earth that way 
or whether it's directly behind. I don't know if it's directly behind because, uh, I don't know, we didn't have any magnetopause reversals like we have had in the past. This is when we actually did have a magnetopause reversal back on uh, March 12th, 2012. I think that was the first one. And I believe there was another one. in April 2016 and there might have been another one in between but anyway I don't have enough video time to uh, try to hunt all those down I'm trying to show you the one from March 12th but this video is not cooperating there it is you see that there's the Sun there's our magnetopause. And there's some serious pressure. So that had to have been when, this was back in 2012. That had to have, that had to have been when uh, Nemesis was incoming. Now it's gone its way back out because uh, if you look at my YouTube channel, I made a bunch of videos beginning in uh, 2015. And I caught it when it first made its perihelion around the sun. And this is a picture of that. It was in late uh, 2014 and around November. <clears throat> and you can see there's the sun. And this is like with it's a simple red filter over my cell phone. And um, you can see the sun. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, other uh, celestial objects. This is about when it made the turn back in 2014. And you can um, access some of those earlier videos if you want. But uh, I would highly recommend you check out some of these other videos, especially if you want to get a handle on what's really going on with the weather on the Earth and how you can perhaps make a difference. And keep yourself from being victimized by severe weather but as you can see my channel went down for like two and a half years almost the last video was around 9 5 15 and then it went down for like till january of 2018 that's when i was for some reason it just came back up and this is when I started making videos again but if you page back through here you'll see some of my earlier stuff so here's the uh, solar ham tutorial I put the links below and this is about the Lagrange point or I'm sorry this is about the Phi angle and if you look at it here, anything above 180 means something we're connecting to something behind the Earth. And look at this. I mean, it's all over the board. Now, there's some serious magnetic uh, instability around the planet. And it would be my hypothesis that Nemesis is somewhere probably behind the Earth. But I don't, that, that just doesn't account for the uh, extra solar wind pressure coming from in front of the planet so I'm not exactly sure about that but unless there's another solar body a, a little smaller third sun I don't know I honestly don't I don't believe in that stellar core theory with uh, Dr. Physicist Claudia Albers and Scott's channel. I mean, uh, they're at this info COINTEL Pro channel without a doubt. So I don't hold to any of the stuff they say. But anyway, I'll leave the links for this stuff. And uh, looks like I'm running out of time here shortly. I pulled up the geospace. There really wasn't a lot to see on that. So I'll leave you with the MLSO images. And we'll let this run out and we'll see how much they sanitize this thing by tomorrow.
Thanks for listening. Uh, put some comments below and let, let me know uh, what you want me to cover. Uh, what exactly are you focusing on? All right, peace out.